Hi, I'm Oliver Lundy, I'm a photographer from the UK and this is part of my automotive series and in this video I'm going to be showing you how you can create fake reflection shots using Photoshop so you can get photos that look like this. So first of all this can be done in the real world, in camera, as they say, you just have to find a reflective surface like um, uh, a puddle or a large body of water that's, that you can position the car in so that you can get both the car and the reflection in frame. Uh, and you might have to tweak it a little bit, you might have to find the right focal length, but you can absolutely do this and it looks really good when you can, when you can do it. But you can't always do it and it's sometimes quite difficult to set these up in the real world and it is something that's relatively easy to do in Photoshop and you can make it look quite real if you know what to do. To do this, you need to shoot with this in mind. So there's a certain type of photo that you're gonna to need to get and it's where the bottom line of the car is completely flat or as close as flat as, and as level as you can get it. So the wheels need to be on the same level as each other. So if you were to draw a straight line through the image at the bottom of the front wheel, it would also line up with the rear wheel. And that's because we're gonna be flipping the image and if you do that and it's not like that, they're going to be mismatched and it's not going to work and you're going to have to tweak it and it, it loses all realism so you need to try and shoot with the car level and there's some tips for this so one is try and use longer focal lengths because that sort of flattens the car and makes it easier to get this look and also try and um, shoot from low angles when you shoot from higher angles naturally the things that are closer to you are going to warp more um, and therefore it's easier to do this if you shoot from lower angles if not completely on the ground so with that in mind I'm going to jump right in to uh, how to do this so I'm going to use this image of a Lamborghini that I shot uh, some time ago now it's one of my all-time favorite shots and I actually use this as my business card as well once you've done all of your edits to the image that you normally would you've got a final image that you're ready to export this is when you can now add in the reflection element of it so this was my final image so first of all you're going to need a little bit of space to work with so you take the prop tool and you're just going to drag down the bottom just to give you more space for the whole composition once you add the reflection now you're going to duplicate your original image and you're going to control t to get into the transform tool you're going to right click and click flip vertical and then drag the image down now to see how to line it up you just drop the opacity down to 50 percent and now you can already see that the reflection lines up pretty well and you just got to get it just right and you can use the arrow keys on your computer to up lower or um, raise this to get to the absolute perfect level now i want it so that the rear wheels are touching so it looks like a seamless reflection and we might have to tweak that a bit uh, for the front but that's okay so now obviously we've got to get rid of this foreground that's still in the reflection image so rename this reflection image so uh, to do that i'm just going to take the rectangular selection tool I'm going to select everything that I don't want, which is everything up to the base of the wheels of the car. And then I'm going to create a layer mask. But before I do that, I'm going to adjust the selection to feather it. And I'm going to feather it by five pixels so that the edge of that um, mask isn't a harsh line. And then click the mask tool. now because I only clicked it, I didn't shift click it, I now need to invert that mask and now it looks like it's supposed to. So white reveals, black conceals. So I've now masked out the foreground of the reflection shot and now we've got this. And this is pretty close to what it can look like. You could pretty much leave it here if you wanted to, but let's dive into a bit more. So when you zoom in, you can see now that this edge where the two cars meet is not perfect for this and it, you can still see a slightly harsh line here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to, with the mask selected, I'm going to take a soft edge brush and I'm just going to paint away some of the reflection layer just to clean up the join between the two. 
and then I'm going to do it at the back here as well. There we go. Okay, so that's looking pretty good, but reflections in reality look different than the actual uninterrupted, you know, not the reflection part of an image. And that's because it's slightly darker and it's never gonna be as sharp as it would be if you were looking at it without through a reflection. It's normally water, it can be dirty and that can affect it. So what we need to do is we need to darken off the reflection layer. So we're gonna create a curves adjustment layer, drop down, put a point in it and drop it down to darken it. But as you can see, it's affecting the whole image. So now we need to clipping mask or clip it to the reflection layer. So now you can see it's only affecting the bottom layer. And you can unfortunately see where this is now creating a dark line. So what we need to do is with the mask selected, take another soft edge brush and with black, just gently paint away the edge here so that we're not seeing the dark edge of the impact of this curves adjustment. So that's looking much better already. And then additionally, I like to create another curves adjustment there. Drop the, the light again, clipping mask. But now I'm going to actually lower the impact of this with a gradient tool. So what I'm trying to do is Imagine that the foreground is going to be darker and then it's going to get brighter as you get up to the car. Kind of like a vignette effect for the reflection. So with the background, uh, with the mask selected, click up from the bottom and you get this nice effect where it's darkening off this foreground but not the actual car. If you want it to be a bit more than that, there we go. So I also think that this left edge of the frame is a bit too dark bright, but I'm gonna correct that later on. So now we also need to make it less sharp because it's way too sharp for a reflection. So we need to select the original reflection layer. I'm gonna create a duplicate just because it's always better to have something to go back to if you so choose. And then we're gonna go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and if I go too hard, you can see that now it's too blurred and it doesn't look real because it's too blurry. If it was a real reflection in water, it would be much sharper than that. If I don't do anything at all, now it looks way too sharp and that doesn't look real either. So it's a balance between the two. And you have to make it based around what's right for your image. But mine, I think, is gonna be somewhere around 3.5. I think that's gonna soften it enough that it won't look sharp anymore, but it's also not going to be too obvious that I've blurred it. So now you can see if we zoom in, the reflection isn't as sharp as the car, but it is still noticeably a reflection, but it's not obviously fake. So you could leave it there. It look, I think it looks good, um, but, and this is going to be convincing to the untrained eye, that this could be a legitimate real reflection shot and you could crop it and export it and leave it there. If you want to add another layer of realism to this, you can actually add in what it, the surface that's re being reflected is. And I'm gonna use a puddle for this. So you just need to grab a picture of a puddle, here's mine, and take it into your image, scale it up. Luckily, we don't actually need it to be particularly high quality for this because we're just using it as a layer mask. So with this layer selected, we're going to go into color range. And now, as you can see here, we're, we've got this selection of the lighter parts of the image. I'm actually going to blur this a little bit more and just give a little bit more range to it. There we go. So now click OK. And now what I've got is a selection of the darker parts of this image, which are the water in this image. So I can then group all of the reflection shots or reflection layers, I should say, and then call that reflection. So now I've got the selection. If I now create a layer mask on the group of reflection shots, you can now see it's created this mask, which is uh, actually pretty close to what I'm after, but we're going to tweak it. So we're going to disconnect the layer mask from the group. So now I'm just affecting the layer mask. I'm going to hit Control T, 
spread it out to the edges of the frame and I'm going to drag it down and I actually want to use this kind of left edge here where we've got these kind of two puddles here. So I'm going to affect the perspective, just draw that out a bit. And that's just because to try and match the perspective of the original image and the puddle image. There we go. And I'm going to also paint back in this area in the very foreground. And I'm just going to darken that off later. There we go. And I don't want these elements in the, on the side here. So I'm going to get rid of those. So now, as you can see, this is a pretty realistic looking puddle in the foreground and it makes uh, it adds another layer to this uh, in terms of realism but the only thing to now consider is depth of field so this original image was shot at quite a shallow depth of field so the background is blurry but also if i now turn off the reflection layer entirely you can see the foreground was also blurry and that's again because of this shallow depth of field which is great for drawing attention to the car but it's not great in the sense of Anybody who knows about photography is going to look at this and say, ah, oh, well, why is the background blurry, but the foreground isn't? So we need to actually blur this puddle effect that we've created. So we need to, with the layer mask selected, we need to go up to filter again and then blur, Gaussian blur. And we're going to have to go a little bit more than this to make this look realistic. So I think we need to go for I think 20, 27.7, yeah, it's about that. So as you can see, that's now blurred out the, the harsher lines of what the puddles that we've created. That would be um, what you would see if this was a genuine real shot, shot with actual puddles in this environment. So uh, then you can do any final tweaks uh, in this particular image, get rid of that now. Uh, I would just darken off this left side creating a curve and then a gradient there we go and i think that's where i'd leave it i think that's pretty much there yeah so hopefully you can see this is a pretty fun tool to have in your kit so that you can do this and if you don't have access to places with big expanses of water or you don't want to have to hose the whole environment to get this kind of shot in uh, in the real world you can do it this way and if you do have a go at this and you can experiment with all different types of things with this way now that you know how to do it you can try all sorts of different things but the if you do try it post them on instagram and tag me in so that i can see that you've tried this technique and it's worked for you because that'd be really fun for me if you have got something from this it'd be really cool if you could drop me a like on this video and if you want to see more of my automotive series then do check out the rest of my videos and if you want to see more in the future then click the subscribe button and click the little bell so that you can get notified when i release other videos otherwise i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching